Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about one of our most popular resources at GUTS, the weekly calendar. Many students that seek our support struggle with time management. This resource is designed to help you schedule when to complete tasks, to review your work, break up large assignments into smaller chunks, and find gaps in your schedule to ensure you are working at the most efficient time for you. This weekly calendar is completely customizable, so you can utilize this calendar in whatever way that works best for you. Some students find it more beneficial to label each session with the subject and what specific activities they are going to do while they study. Others prefer to make it more open and just list the subject. If you are having trouble figuring out the best way to fill out this resource, please consider making an appointment with one of our study skills specialists. So here we are showing a blank weekly planning grid that segments each day of the week by hours through 6 a.m. through 11 p.m. The times can be adjusted to match common class start and end times, be broken into 30 minute periods, or whatever time sequence you would like. To-do list. In preparation for filling out the weekly calendar, we recommend that you make a list of everything you have to finish by the end of the week. This includes assignments, club events, pre-planned events with friends, as well as other tasks that you want to complete but do not have a specific time, such as reading a book or listening to a podcast. A blank to-do list is found on the second page of the weekly calendar. If you are filling out this resource as you watch the video, now would be a great time to pause and do this. Here we are showing an example of a student's prepared list of tasks that are due by the end of this week. This student has listed some accounting assignments, a Spanish essay, classes he wants to study, as well as personal goals he wants to complete in the week, such as talk to May. For now, the duration column can be completely empty. We will revisit that in another step. Also, I want to note that a due date is not necessary if there is not a set date for a task. Some of these tasks are ones that will be filled in after commitments are scheduled. Okay, so now that we have a list, we can start filling out the weekly calendar. Filling out commitments. The first thing you want to do is fill out the calendar with commitments such as classes, COVID tests, work, club activities, pre-planned events such as a movie night with a friend, and so on. If you have commitments that are not flexible and cannot be used to study time, fill those in now. If you are following along with this video, this would also be a great time to pause. On the screen is an example of the weekly calendar with commitments filled in. This student chose to color code each type of event. If you would like to do so as well, there is a color key area below the to-do list on the second page. We recommend color coding based on the type of activity, such as classes, meal times, work, exams, and pastimes. You can also color code based off of classes and have a lecture and related study session match. This may make colors complicated on the chart, but it can help in segmenting and determining how many hours are spent on each class. If you have trouble or cannot distinguish visual clues, consider a tactile format or an electronic format that can be easily read aloud. Now we are going to return to the to-do list. Estimating duration. We are going to determine how long we think each task will take. Try to estimate the most amount of time each task may take. If you use the time, that is great. You already planned for it. If you spend less time, now you have some more free time. If you are having trouble estimating the times, we recommend making an appointment with one of our study skills specialists for a more personal guide to making these estimates. If you are following along, please take a moment to pause and think about the time allotment for each task. Fill in the durations for each task in the durations column of the to-do list. As a note, for simplicity in this video, all the durations are in one hour increments. For events that do not start or end on the hour, solutions include changing the times on the left or indicating the minutes in each cell, such as 30 Spanish class. Schedule remaining tasks. 
Now that we have estimated durations for each task, let's fill them into the gaps in the weekly calendar. Knowing the duration for each event ahead of time will help in ensuring enough time is allotted in the schedule. When filling in gaps, some students prefer to work in larger chunks, whereas others prefer smaller chunks. Do whatever makes the most sense for you. We do not recommend working longer than four hours straight though, as retention is usually compromised at that point. Our study skills program also has resources on the prioritization of tasks. If you are interested in this, we recommend making an appointment with a study skills specialist to discuss this further. Now we are showing you the calendar with commitments filled, as well as work time for one class. This student prefers smaller blocks for working and scheduled his accounting class work accordingly. Each day, Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. or after, he's scheduled to work on accounting. This includes his pre-assignment, studying for his exam later in the week, and working on his accounting project. On the weekend, he also scheduled time to work on his accounting project. The total durations for each task match the duration on the to-do list. This student simply listed study for accounting. If you prefer making study goals and planning study sessions, feel free to be more specific. Now, repeat this process with remaining tasks. Here, remaining tasks have been added to the calendar. Assignments for Spanish, study time for OTM, and times to chat with friends are all now scheduled. There is also a buffer time. When schedules have a lot of empty space, buffer times are not all that necessary since any of the empty times can take the place of a buffer time. Here we included it even though there are many open parts of the schedule so that you can understand how to use it. When schedules are very busy or you desire a completed schedule without blanks, buffer times can be used. A buffer time is a time set aside in case work needs to be moved around during the week or if you did not complete a task during the time allotted. For example, if something comes up and the student wasn't able to work on his accounting project on Thursday, he can make up that time on Saturday during the buffer time. You may not end up using your buffer time each week and that is fine. While working with this resource, we recommend a few strategies to make it as easy to follow as possible. First, try to be realistic when filling out the schedule. Free time is important, and you can't expect yourself to be productive 24-7. Second, keep this schedule someplace accessible. If you need or prefer an electronic version, save it on all of your devices for easy review. This way, it is a constant reminder of your weekly tasks and expectations. Finally, some students benefit from setting up reminders on their phones or other devices to know when work time started. If you would like to get some more information on the skills used for this resource or how to adapt it specifically for your needs, feel free to make an appointment with our study skills program. We are also available to talk about other study and learning skills if you want to learn more effective strategies for you. If you have any questions, you can email us at gutsstudentorg at gmail.com or our study skills specialists directly at ss.wisc at gmail.com. These emails are in the description below. We hope this resource can help you and thank you for watching.